John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. Well, you know him, you love him. Here he is, the next governor of the great state of Colorado, my predecessor, Tom Tancredo. Well, you know him anyway. Yeah, you know him. Well, we all love you. We all love you. All you right. know, I'm going to tell you right now that it's this station. I want to thank the Channel 12 viewers because you're the one that really put me on the stage years ago. At the oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's probably, you know, there's a pledge so drive, there there's a pledge taking, drive taking going on right now going, I'm not giving you another no damn dime. dime. You know how many times I was here begathoning it? I mean, I you were. It. Oh, yeah, man, because that's and, the and only as way soon that... as, And as soon as you won for Congress and stopped doing that, their revenues went skyrocketing. Oh. It was it was terrific. <laughs> they, you know, it's it's uh, that thing where you, you start banging your head with a hammer so you don't feel the feel back pain. pain. Yeah, right. it, it works out pretty well. All right, let's let's <laughs> let's jump into this. What the hell are you thinking? Help me understand uh, understand I this. I was thinking one day I got up and I thought, let's see, um, what do I really want to do for my ego and uh, to to get back in front of cameras and stuff like that? Get on the J John Caldera yeah, show. That's, that, that's it. Because this this will get you the women. Let me tell Sit. you. <laughs> Really, what you know, you're you're making a good living. The whole country knows you. Half of them love you. Half of them hate you. You got death threats on a regular basis. That's you got true. everything a Tom Tancredo could ever want. want. <laughs> and and you decide you decide to throw in an ultimatum. Yeah, a request. No, a request. A request. It was an it was ultimatum. A request. It was a request. Yeah, I did. Uh, it seemed to me to be really the only thing. When you look at what was happening and how the you know, campaigns for uh, the two people who are vying for the Republican nomination, how they have sort of imploded, um, you come away with the, I think, idea that, and I think it's correct, that they can't win. I mean, I, I don't know anybody who really, beside perhaps the candidates themselves, their families, their great closest friends and associates, most people don't think that either of those two candidates can win. Well, so let, so let, here let, we are. But I mean, start you. with that. Let, let, start let, with let, that. Let, let me challenge you on that part All right. first. All right, I don't think Dan Mays is going to win the, the nomination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I don't see that. McGinnis has name recognition. He's got the pocketbook. He's been working at it for the last two years. He will win the, the nomination. Why are you so certain that McGinnis can't win? When you look at the polls, up until the plagiarism scandal, uh, he was ahead by five percentage points in er almost every poll. And this I was is, working for him, by the and way. And this, this, was, this was our year. This was the Republicans' right. year. Just because of this scandal, it doesn't mean that Hickenlooper's not going to have his own scandals. Right. He will. You know, there's going to be all sorts you of... You know something? Lung. Oh, I know something. Hey. Yeah, I know something. Slip me this little note <laughs> there, will you? Here's, here's, a, here's a black and white. <laughs> but it's still a long way away. Why are you so dead certain that Scott McGinnis couldn't win in a two-way race? Well, I don't think that this is over with, first of all. I don't think that ever, that um, this is the end of the problem for him, number one. We, no. we, when you say end of the problem, you think there's there's more dirt out there I, or I don't more know, problems no. or more Yeah, issues. I don't know that there's more dirt. I just think that the, the problems emanating out of this situation are not over with. Okay, that there's more that could be happening because the plagiarism of plagiarism charges, the, the money, the money the from moving from the Hassan family foundation, mm -hmm. et cetera. Yeah, uh, that seems to me to be problematic. It also seems to me that when you have, you know, what CODA did, the you know, the Colorado, Colorado Democracy Alliance, Alliance. For those people don't know, that's the organization of all these left-leaning organizations that Tim Gill and Pat Stryker funded so very well. That's right. Apparently, they sent, I was told this just the other day by a member of the media, so I certainly believe it. Well, then it's got to it's uh, be true. That uh, they sent people down to, to Fort Lewis and m to go through all of the papers that he had sent there. You know, all, it, when you leave Congress, believe this or not, John, people say, what are you going to do with your papers? What papers? Your mail, your your bills, your everything that you got piling up all over that office. And, and some people believe that uh, that anybody cares <laughs> about what you're, you know. However, in this case, somebody did because CODA sent staffers down to Fort Lewis to go through every single piece of paper that well, Scott. So, so former Scott, congressman Scott McGinnis says here to Fort Lewis College and says here my you can papers. have my library. That's right. And you're saying that that's where it gonna, came they're going to go through each and every one of them. And these. they did. And that's where it came from. That's where this whole thing came from. Now, do you think for a moment that it's going to end? Do you really believe that, that when I'm, he I'm, goes, I think this will all blow over, so, uh, it's going to end? And now, if, mine, by if, the way, uh, shredded. If, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> if you were going to donate it, was, was it to the Colorado Bartending Institute? Or? <laughs> well, they came in, really, they came into my office. I remember my staff right toward the end. They said, um, where do 
you want us to send your papers? And I said, to the dumpster. What do you mean? And, and they said, well, no, you know, don't you want to contribute them to some college? I said, what, what purpose? Who is going to care about this except people who hate me and want to figure out something they can get out of that. I start the shredder. You know, are you crazy? All anyway, right. I don't have papers. <laughs> I have no papers. <laughs> I, don't, I can't go to I mean, Arizona. <laughs> the, the, the idea of, of looking at your crayon drawings for, for some college is not, not going to excite anyone. But tell but, me but I'm why. I'm saying that it will all come there, to there's my point. Gonna, there's going to be why is it that McGinnis was unelectable in your eyes? Because because it's not over. Because he's going to have that come up over and over. He he says, I think it'll all blow over. No, it won't. Do you think for a moment that they're going to let it blow over? Do you think either the Post will or uh, or Hickenlooper? I mean, it will come back every single day. And the drop you saw in the poll, the whatever eight or ten it's, points, it was about a five point drop. Well, I no, no, it was. He, he went from like four or five Plus ahead. Five. To to what? Eight, I thought it was three, one or two four. down, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it's, right. it, it, there, was a, there was a considerable drop, right. yes. That's of the people who pay attention to this whole thing right now in July. Frankly, when that expands, when people start focusing more and more on that issue toward October and November, it just, that, that thing gets worse and worse and worse. I think. I mean, I think that's been the history. I believe that that will have, would have happened to poor Scott. And then he he, you know, Scotty, he's been a friend a long time. I have worked on, I was working on his campaign two and a half weeks ago. Right before all this happened, I was doing everything they asked me to do. One was on a Saturday come out to his headquarters and stump for him and get all the guys, you know, revved right. up and go out and knock on doors. I was there. I would have been there. Believe me, I was doing everything I could for him. Now, now. It all fell apart. I do not believe it can be put together. Scott is a is a, a good guy in many respects, but he isn't a person that engenders tremendous support, enthusiasm, and close knit you know relationships. He's Un unlike you. Yeah. yeah, lovable you. Yeah. All right. So, so but what, I mean, you got to admit, when, when, I, you, you got to admit, I, I engender a lot of both support and, and opposition. The people who really like me, as you said, they really do. People who kidding? really hate those me, of really us, hate me. Those of us who love you hate you. It's, 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 it's a tough thing. <laughs> That's right. How did this? How did this come down? Let me let me ask you about the technique. You put in an ultimatum. You said you're out by Monday at noon, or I am in. No. No, no, John. I did not say all that. Right. You, you said. Uh, let, let me be more specific. You yes, said, please. Be yeah. accurate, at least. All right. Well, that's not my forte, but I I'll know. Try. I'm trying to help you here. You said either you need to say you're going to drop out, or uh, say that after the primary, that if the polling numbers show you to lose, that you're going to drop right. out. Then. Right. It wasn't. The, uh, all I ever said was, stay in the race. I didn't say anybody had to drop out. Anybody. I said, all I'm asking you to do, is to state publicly that if that. Uh, on August the 11th, whoever that winner is, by the way, of the primary, if that, if you will state that uh, on that date, if I'm behind in the polls or even even in the polls, I'm sorry, if I'm even or ahead, I'll stay in. If I'm right. below that, I won't. And I'm telling you now because the, uh, the party needs to know and I'm, I recognize the problems I've got and this is a way for me to, by the way, I think you could go out and campaign like crazy on that, in, in the primary anyway, and say, look, you know, I'm, I am trying to do what's right for the party. I think this is going to be okay. But if I can't make it, I can't make it. And so that's what I asked them to do. And, and you know, I had to put some time limit on it because if they don't, if, not, neither one of them do, uh, and gets to the primary, and how do we know then what will happen? We don't know anybody will. Did you make and any then if I'm going to have to go into a race, I need the time.